Hey folks, thanks so much for joining me today. We are going to make this, the peg game. Okay, so how we are going to start this is with a chunk of wood. It needs to be at least four and a half inches long or five inches long, somewhere in there, and it needs to be at least four inches tall. So I have a one by six, and it is five and a half wide, and I cut it to five inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure out the top triangle. So the way I'm going to do that is to take my pencil and take a ruler, and I'm going to measure along the bottom four and a half inches. Measuring on the bottom. Four and a half inches, making a mark. Then I'm going to go two and a quarter, because half of four and a half is two and a quarter. And I'm going to measure up four inches. And I could put the four in the bottom and measure it to zero. Or I could flip it around, put the zero on the bottom, and measure to the four. So then I want to measure over on that line two and one quarter, or two and a four, and make two lines that intersect. That is going to be the point of my triangle. So now, I just need to connect the dots, connect the points. And now I have my triangle. So now I'm ready to cut out my triangle. First thing you need to remember, wear your safety glasses for sure. Next thing you need to do is stick your lumber in a vise, or you can you can hold on to it and cut it. It's not gonna be as good. I'd recommend a vise. So you're going to take this little bench stop, slide it up, move the vise out to where you can put this bench stop in the hole in the table. I'm going to make it snug. Then I'm going to start my cut by using the edge of the board. I'm gonna angle my saw, so I'm just using the edge. Then I'm going to pivot down once I have a channel that I can follow so that my cut's not getting all crazy and going any which way it wants. So now, folks, I'm going to have a problem because this is pushing this way, this is pushing this way, and as I cut down, it's going to want to close on that blade. So I'm going to need to move this around so that my cut is not going to be squished or be, um, tightened as I cut down. So I move this down. Another thing I could do, I could put it up in the vise like this so that I'm cutting straight down. Or I could go like this and cut at an angle, but I like to set it up so I'm cutting straight down. And I might do that for this cut because there will be a little bit here to hold on to, but not much. So I'll finish this cut out. Okay, so I have my piece. Now I need to cut this piece. So I'm gonna put it in the vise, and I'll show you how this works. So I'm gonna put it in the vise, so I have an up and down line to cut. Now what I would recommend is you hold it by as much as you can, because as you get to cutting down here, if you're holding it by like the very corner, it'll have a tendency to want to split and break off that point. 
So hold it with as much purchasing as you can in order to make this stronger. Okay, so now I have my triangle. I can do one of two things and it doesn't matter the order. One of the things I'm going to do is drill all these holes that go in there. Or the other thing you could do is make the base of your triangle game, your peg game rather. So yeah, I'm gonna start out making the base first. I'm gonna stick my triangle on here and I wanna make it as easy on myself as possible. So I'm going to use an edge and I'm going to put that triangle up about a half an inch and then I'm going to mark some lines and measure another line out a half an inch all the way around so it creates that little ledge to where I can hold on to while I play the peg game. I'm gonna measure up a half inch and a half inch. I'm going to make a line and I wanna actually scoot this over a little bit. So I have my half inch line. So now I'm going to mark the outline of everything. Make a new line a half inch out by putting my my ruler against the line I just drew, marking out a half an inch, and then connecting those lines. Do it again over here. Half inch out, half inch out. Marking those lines. And now I have the outline of my base piece that I'm going to cut. And I made it easy on myself by putting it a half inch away from the edge. So now instead of three lines I have to cut, I only need to cut two lines now. Okay, so I have a good cut on here. Now I'm ready to either glue these on or I can drill the holes. I like to actually go ahead and glue these together so that way I can drill my holes and I can set my depth to this level and I can hold on to this level. But so I can still work with this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and mark out the holes and then drill them and then I'll glue everything together. So in marking out these holes, we need 15 holes. So the way we are going to do this is I'm going to set my triangle up for you here. Instead of measuring all these out, I like to do things the easy way that's repeatable. So I'm going to put a dot in each corner. I don't want to get them too close to the edge because once I drill that hole, if it's too close, it could bust out. So even this one right here might be a little close to that edge. Move it here, that one looks okay. Now, I have a dot in every corner. Now I wanna put a dot in the middle. If I have a line here and here and here, I want a dot in the middle of those lines. Now I'm gonna put a dot between those. Okay, I have almost all the dots there, except I have a row of five. I'm supposed to have a row of four, three, two, and one. And so I need two more in this row, and I'm gonna go straight up from here, and straight up from here in line with those, and then one right smack in the middle. So now I have my row of five, four, three, two, and one. Now I just need to go and drill those, and I'm going to drill them out with a quarter inch drill bit because I'm gonna use quarter inch dowels for my pegs. 
So I'm gonna set my depth gauge to only go so deep. And I'm gonna turn on my drill press. And I'm gonna go down nice and slow. I wanna let the drill bit do the actual work. I don't need to push down on this real hard. I wanna let the drill bit do the work. When I get the bottom of the hole, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Okay, so I have my holes all drilled out. Now a lot of times you'll see some wood left around the edges. What I like to do is I like to take a little scrap of sandpaper and I like to roll it to where it's a little cylinder. And with that little cylinder, I like to put it in the holes and kind of sand the edges of the holes. This will make them nice and smooth so that way when I put the peg in, it goes in nice and smooth. So now I'm ready to glue this down to the base. And the way I'm gonna do that is just by putting a little quarter inch, maybe not a quarter inch, a quarter size, like you have four quarters for a dollar, put a quarter size spot of glue on here, work it around just a little bit, push it on here, push it, and then just leave it. And while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to cut my pegs out of a quarter inch dowel. And the size that I like is an inch and a quarter, an inch and a fourth. So I'm gonna measure out an inch and a fourth Cut it off, do that again. Or what you can do is you can get a square and then you can just find inch and a quarter, mark it, mark it, mark it, mark it again. You need 14 pegs for 15 holes because you have to have one that starts empty. Now another little trick on here, friends. If you put your dowel way out here and then try to cut, this will be bouncy. It won't be solid. So what I recommend is only stick it out about two lengths and that way you can take your coping saw and you can cut right on that line. And remember, don't push down hard with the coping saw. Nice and easy and then you'll have a nice little Nice little peg cut off. So after you cut 14 of these, I recommend taking some sandpaper, wrapping it around the end, and then turning both the peg and the sandpaper, and it'll put a nice finished edge on that, a nice sanded edge, and it'll also make it easier for that peg to go in the hole. And I actually like to do it on both sides because it makes it easier to handle the peg. It makes it more comfortable. And if you want, you can use like a, a power sander or a palm sander, but I find just using hand sandpaper is sufficient. So now that I have my peg, and I cut 14 of those, and my peg goes right in the hole. Okay, so we got our 14 pegs. We're gonna put these in the holes. And I'm gonna show you how to play this game. So you have to start off with one less peg than you have holes. In this game, the first time I ever played it was at a certain restaurant. The goal of the game is to have only one peg left. So the way you start this, you have one hole that's empty. And then you jump a peg 
and the peg that you just jumped, you remove. So then you have to jump to an open spot, and then you remove that peg that you jumped. So it's kind of like checkers in a way. You jump a peg and remove one. You jump a peg and remove one. You jump it, remove it. Jump it, remove it. Jump, remove, jump, remove. And if you can't do any more jumps, then, then you're done. So I lost horribly here. I lost real bad. So you have to plan out kind of where you're going to jump. Because you can only jump one if it's right beside the next one. Where here, I can't do any jumps, and these don't have anything nearby, so now I'm done. All right, there you go, folks. Now you can make your own peg game, and you know how to play it. So go ahead and get out there and make something, and make today a great day also. And hey, make sure, though, to work hard because hard work is its own reward. Thanks for watching. Alright, so we need a couple tools to make this peg game.